everyone, Jordan Meyer, Wholesome Family Farms. Just got done moving the sheep here. Uh, it's June 3rd, I believe, today. Getting a pile of rain. Just got done pouring just a few minutes ago, and it's pretty wet. Like, the way it rained here just a little bit ago, I wouldn't be surprised a bit if we got like three tenths to a half an inch of rain. Sheep are doing really good. We just got done pulling our ram lambs off because a lot of them guys were pretty big and when we got them hauled in this last winter they started dropping lambs February 15th so there was a lot of them that were getting to the point of well you better better do something about this so we did we got all of our ewe lambs here um, we're actually taking some pre-orders now for people to pick out ewe lambs we have pretty good amount of ewe lambs for people to choose from. They're all doing really well, growing good. It's crazy how fast sheep grow. It's been really fun to see. And yeah, they're happy campers. They're shedding all their hair off really heavily. You move them to a new paddock and you just see lots of remnants left over of all their hair everywhere. Also wanna tell you guys about the grazing school that's going to be coming up on June 28th and 29th with the Land Stewardship Project. Um, we're going to be hosting the school. Uh, it's actually the first ever school that I think they're putting together. It's going to be talking about all your basic soil health principles. We're going to have both days be in the field and we're going to go over all of your stuff that's good for observation like your shovel test, your infiltration test. We're going to do bricks readings. Uh, we're gonna move the sheep and maybe move some cattle too, depending on where we're at with things. And yeah, we're gonna have some plant identification. We're gonna talk about water line and fencing and all of the stuff on setting up a farm for grazing. Maybe some of you have been looking into getting your farm set up for grazing or what's a good way to you know, get it going and have it set up that'll be beneficial for you and for the land and for the animals and for your quality of life. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. There's already people been signing up for that. Um, you can find that on the Land Stewardship Project website. I'll put a link in the description for everybody to look at that. And yeah, it'll be really exciting. We got, we're gonna be leading it and then there's gonna be a lot of other regional grazers in the area that are gonna be helping out as well. Um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting. And it'll be interesting too, talking about coming out of last year with the drought and everything we had and going into this year with all the rain that we've been getting and stuff. So, yep, really looking forward to that. I don't know, Rochelle, you have anything to add to that? Just the date, June 28th and 29th. Both days will be eight to 4.30. And then we'll have some in classroom time, not much. Most of it's gonna be in the field doing hands-on stuff. And like Jordan said, it'll kind of be at both farms. So everybody will get a chance to see the sheep and see how that operation works. And then we'll do some stuff at home since we're working on a project there at home. And Yeah, we're doing an equip project at home too, actually. So people will be able to see kind of how we're establishing that 100 acres of ground, turning it from row crop into perennial pasture for grazing. And I don't know, it's kind of a learning curve for us too, to be honest, because we started the project out and we're like, ah, oh, we're only going to do cattle. And then once we already got going on the project, it's like, well, now we got sheep to deal with, so. Yeah, and then one other thing to add too, we're going to have some other speakers. So we'll have some more experience just besides ourselves. Yeah, for sure. So we'll be able to see a lot of different people's perspectives and ideas on things, but um, it really helps too, even with us going through the project and setting this up, how many different things have to change and everything else like there's one spot on that farm back there you know I was only going to do a single wire high tensile around the woods and it's like well should I put maybe three wires up for keeping the sheep in the field and the goats in the woods but then I got seeing how these guys graze this year and then it's like well I think it might be beneficial just to leave it as a one wire fence because these guys the way they graze they don't they're scared to go in the woods I think it's a big predator issue for them they like to stay up in the open areas and stuff like that. So just the way they graze and the way they act compared to cattle and goats is just a whole lot different. And you know, how are we gonna set it up so it's easiest maintenance on our fencing and all of those kinds of things are all really thing, good things to think about 
before doing a project like that. And I'm kind of glad that we haven't really started the project too much yet because now that we got the sheep, things are definitely changing. So definitely looking forward to that. Hope to see you guys there. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Take care and God bless.